listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 237. We are continuing in the book of 2 Chronicles. And if you remember, Jehoiada, the priest, turned things around for Judah. He decided to make the Lord's temple a thing that really matters. And he anoints King Joash to help him. And King Joash is a good king. And he rebuilds the Lord's temple. But eventually, Jehoiada dies. It was a long time. I mean, he was 130 years old before he died. But once Jehoiada has gone, King Joash falls back to the old patterns. And even though God sends another prophet, Zechariah, to warn King Joash, he doesn't listen. And so by the end of the year, the Aramean army comes against King Joash. And well, that was the end of him. And then you'll meet the new king of Judah, King Amaziah. He was only 25 years old when he became king, and he gathers the whole army of Judah. But while this is going on, the Israelite army, remember, the kingdom's divided between northern Israel and southern Judah, the Israelite army in the north decides to start attacking towns in Judah. And Amaziah does the wrong thing. He starts worshiping other idols. So the Lord is angry with Amaziah. And there was a great battle between Israel and Judah. And so you'll have to stay with us to find out what happens. And we're also continuing in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And Paul is finishing his letter to the church in Corinth. He'll talk about his plans. So pay attention as he gives some final instructions. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. 2 Chronicles 24 Joash rebuilds the temple. Joash was seven years old when he became king. He ruled for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother, Zibia was from the town of Beersheba. During the whole time that Jehoiada, the priest, was living, Joash did what was pleasing to the Lord. Jehoiada chose two wives for Joash, and he had sons and daughters. Then later on, Joash decided to rebuild the Lord's temple. Joash called the priests and the Levites together. He said to them, Go out to the towns of Judah and gather the money the Israelites pay every year. Use that money to rebuild your God's temple. Hurry and do this! The Levites didn't hurry. So King Joash called Jehoiada the high priest. The king said, Jehoiada, why haven't you made the Levites bring in the tax money from Judah and Jerusalem? The Lord's servant Moses and the Israelites used that tax money for the tent of the agreement. In the past, Athaliah's sons broke into God's temple and used the holy things in the Lord's temple for their worship of the Baal gods. Athaliah was a very wicked woman. King Joash gave a command for a box to be made and put outside the gate at the Lord's temple. Then the Levites made an announcement in Judah and Jerusalem. They told the people to bring in the tax money for the Lord. That tax money is what Moses, the servant of God, had required the Israelites to give while they were in the desert. All the leaders and the people were happy. They brought their money and filled the box with it. Whenever the box was full, the Levites took the box to the king's officials. Then the king's secretary and an official of the high priest would come and empty the box and return it to the temple. They did this often and gathered a large amount of money. Then King Joash and Jehoiada gave the money to the men who were in charge of the work on the Lord's temple. And they hired stone workers, carpenters, and others skilled in working with iron and bronze to rebuild the Lord's temple. They all worked hard. The repair work went well. They rebuilt God's temple the way it had been before and made it strong. When the workers finished, They brought the money that remained to King Joash and Jehoiada. 
They used this money to make things the priests would use in the Lord's temple for the worship and the offerings. These were bowls and other utensils made from gold and silver. The priests offered burnt offerings in the Lord's temple every day while Jehoiada was alive. Jehoiada had a very long life. He was 130 years old when he died. The people buried Jehoiada among the kings in the city of David. They honored him in this way because he had done so much good in Israel for God and for God's temple. After Jehoiada died, the leaders of Judah came and bowed to King Joash. The king listened to the leaders. They all stopped worshiping at the temple of the Lord, the God their ancestors worshiped. Instead, they started worshiping Asherah poles and other idols. Because of this sin, God was angry with the people of Judah and Jerusalem. God sent prophets to the people to bring them back to the Lord. The prophets warned them. They refused to listen. The Spirit of God filled Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. And he stood in front of the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you people refuse to obey the Lord's commands? You will not be successful. You have left the Lord, so he has also left you. But the people made plans to kill Zechariah. The king commanded them to kill him with stones in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash had forgotten how kind Zechariah's father, Jehoiada, had been to him. And Joash gave the order for Zechariah to be killed. As Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord uh, see what you are doing and punish you. At the end of the year, the Aramean army came against Joash. They attacked Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the people. They sent all the valuable things to the king of Damascus. The Aramean army came with only a small group of men, but the Lord let them defeat the much larger army of Judah. This was a punishment for Joash because the people of Judah had left the Lord, the God their ancestors worshiped. When the Arameans left Joash, he was badly wounded. His own servants made plans against him because he had killed Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. They killed Joash on his own bed. After he died, the people buried him in the city of David, but not in the place where the kings are buried. One of the servants who agreed to kill Joash was Zabad, son of Shimeah, a woman from Ammon. The other was Jehozabad, son of Shimri, a woman from Moab. The story about Joash's sons, the great prophecies against him, and how he rebuilt God's temple are recorded in the book, Commentary on the Kings. Joash's son, Amaziah, became the new king after him. 2 Chronicles chapter 25 Amaziah, king of Judah Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother, Jehoadan, was from Jerusalem. Amaziah did what the Lord wanted him to do, but not with all his heart. As soon as he had strong control of the kingdom, he killed the officers who had killed his father. But Amaziah obeyed the law written in the book of Moses and did not kill their children. The Lord commanded, Parents must not be put to death for something their children did, and children must not be put to death for something their parents did. People should only be punished for what they themselves did. Amaziah gathered the army of Judah together. He grouped them by families, and he put commanders and captains in charge of these groups. The leaders were in charge of all the soldiers from Judah and Benjamin. All the men who were chosen to be soldiers were 20 years old and older. In all, there were 300,000 skilled soldiers ready to fight with spears and shields. Amaziah also hired 100,000 soldiers from Israel. He paid 3,400 kilograms of silver to hire these soldiers. But a man of God came to Amaziah and said, King, 
And don't let the army of Israel go with you. The Lord is not with Israel or the people of Ephraim. Maybe you will make yourself strong and ready for battle. But God is the one who can help you win or help you lose. Amaziah said to the man of God, But what about the money I already paid to the Israelite army? The man of God answered, The Lord has plenty. He can give you much more than that. So Amaziah sent the Israelite army back home to Ephraim. This upset the Israelites, and they went back home full of anger at the people of Judah. Then Amaziah became very brave and led his army to the Salt Valley in the country of Edom. There his army killed 10,000 men from Seir. They also captured 10,000 other men from Seir and took them to the top of a cliff. Then the army of Judah threw them from the top of the cliff while they were still alive and their bodies were broken on the rocks below. Meanwhile, the Israelite army was attacking towns in Judah. They attacked the towns from Beth Haran all the way to Samaria. They killed 3,000 people and took many valuable things. They were angry because Amaziah did not let them join him in the war. Amaziah came home after he defeated the Adamites. He brought the idols that the people of Seir worship, and he started to worship them. He bowed down in front of them and burned incense to them. The Lord was very angry with Amaziah, so he sent a prophet to him. The prophet said, Amaziah, why have you worshipped the gods those people worship? Those gods could not even save their own people from you. When the prophet spoke, Amaziah said to the prophet, we never made you an advisor to the king. Be quiet. If you don't be quiet, you will be killed. And the prophet became quiet, but then said, God has decided to destroy you because you did this and didn't listen to my advice. King Amaziah of Judah talked with his advisors. Then he sent messengers to Joash, son of Jehoaz son of King Jehu of Israel. His message was, Come on, let's fight together, face to face and fight. King Jehoash of Israel sent an answer to King Amaziah of Judah. Jehoash said, One time in the mountains of Lebanon, a little thorn bush sent a message to a big cedar tree. It said, Give your daughter for my son to marry. But a wild animal of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thorn bush. You think you are so great because you defeated Edom? Well, you can brag about that, but now I advise you to stay home. Why ask for trouble? If you start a war with me, you and the people of Judah will be destroyed. But Amaziah refused to listen to Joash's warning. And this is what God had planned. God wanted to let Israel defeat the people of Judah as punishment for following the Edomite gods. So King Jehoash of Israel went to war against King Amaziah of Judah. They faced each other in battle at the town of Beth Shemesh in Judah. Israel defeated Judah. Every soldier of Judah ran away to his home. At Beth Shemesh, King Jehoash of Israel captured King Amaziah of Judah took Amaziah, son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, to Jerusalem. Jehoash broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate, a section about 200 meters long. Then Jehoash took all the gold and silver and all the utensils in the Lord's temple that Obed-Edom was responsible for. He also took important people as hostages. Then he went back to Samaria. King Amaziah son of Joash of Judah, lived 15 years after the death of King Jehoash, son of Jehoaz of Israel. Everything else Amaziah did while he was king is recorded in the book, The History of the Kings of Judah and Israel. When Amaziah stopped obeying the Lord, some people in Jerusalem began making plans to kill him. So he ran away to the town of Lachish, but his enemies sent men to Lachish and they killed Amaziah there. His body was brought back to Jerusalem 
on a horse, and he was buried among his ancestors in the city of David. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 5 to 24. Paul's plans. I plan to go through Macedonia, so I will come to you after that. Maybe I will stay with you for a time. I might even stay all winter. Then you can help me on my trip wherever I go. I don't want to come and see you now because I would have to leave to go to other places. I hope to stay a longer time with you if the Lord allows it, but I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. I will stay here because a good opportunity for a great and growing work has been given to me now, and there are many people working against it. Whenever Timothy arrives, try to make him feel comfortable with you. He is working for the Lord just as I am, so none of you should refuse to accept Timothy. Help him continue on his trip in peace so that he can come back to me. I am expecting him to come back with the other brothers. Now, about our brother Apollos. I strongly encouraged him to visit you with the other brothers. He prefers not to come now, but he will come when he has the opportunity. Paul ends his letter. Be careful. Hold firmly to your faith. Have courage and be strong. Do everything in love. You know that Stephanus and his family were the first believers in Achaia. They have given themselves to the service of God's people. I ask you, brothers and sisters, to follow the leading of people like these and others who work hard and serve together with them. I am happy that Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus have come. You are not here but they have filled your place. They have been a great encouragement to me and to you as well. You should recognize the value of such people. The churches in Asia send you their greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you in the Lord. Also, the church that meets in their house sends greetings. All the brothers and sisters here send their greetings. Give each other this special greeting of God's people. Here's my greeting in my own handwriting. Paul. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be separated from God, lost forever. Come, O Lord, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with all of you in Christ Jesus. Psalm 102, verses 18 to 28. Write these things for future generations, so that they will praise the Lord. The Lord will look down from his holy place above. He will look down at the earth from heaven. And he will hear the prisoners' prayers and free those who were condemned to die. Then people in Zion will tell about the Lord. They will praise his name in Jerusalem when nations gather together and kingdoms come to serve the Lord. God has made me feel old for my age. He has made my life too short. So I cry out, Don't let me die young! My God, you whose years never end! Long ago you made the world. You made the sky with your own hands. The earth and sky will end, but you will live forever. They will wear out like old clothes, and like clothes, you will change them and toss them aside. But you, never change. You will live forever. We are your servants today. Our children will live here, and their descendants will be safe under your care. Thank you, everyone. That was day 237. Join us for day 238. You'll learn about more kings of Jerusalem. You'll learn about the reign of Uzziah, who was 16 years old when he became king. Imagine, find your local 16-year-old and say you are king of all the land. Well, he did what was right in the Lord, and he leads for 52 years. Then Jotham becomes king, and he does what's right in the Lord, but this time the people aren't doing the right thing. And then by the time you get to 
King Ahaz, he's flat out evil. And we go all the way downhill once again. And we will begin the book of 2 Corinthians. I'll give a detailed introduction. Paul establishes his credentials as an apostle, gives praise to the Lord, and joins them in their Christian suffering. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.